Depending on where you live in the world, snakes might be all around you, barely around you, not something you have to worry about, or something that may have your life in danger every single day. That may seem depressing, and it is, but the fact of the matter is that there are snakes out there that can kill humans and other creatures with a single bite. And to make matters worse, there are snakes that are so rare, you may not even recognize the danger when it exists. From the red spitting cobra to the St. Lucia racer and more, here are 20 rarest snakes in the world. Number 20. Red Spitting Cobra We'll begin with a really rare species of snake that you'll only find in Africa, the Red Spitting Cobra. But why is this one so rare? Well, that's because it doesn't come out during the day. It only slithers around at night, which means that one might be next to you as you traverse through its homeland, and you likely wouldn't notice it until it's too late. Typically, the red spitting cobra is about four feet in length, but in rare cases, they can even get up to five feet, which makes it a rather long snake. The red spitting cobra is mainly found in East Africa, which includes a lot of places that I can't pronounce, along with parts of Egypt and Ethiopia. Ethiopia and Tanzania. It also is widespread in the dry country of eastern and northern Kenya, and it primarily inhabits dry savanna and semi-desert areas of East Africa up to a certain elevation. Now I'll tell you why you should be in fear of the red spitting cobra. Well, as the name would suggest, it is indeed one of those snakes of the world that's very venomous, and just as bad, it's a venom that can literally be spat at you and not just injected via a bite as other snakes do. These things are very aggressive and territorial and will hiss at you before launching their venom into your face. Venom in the eyes can cause burning pain and blindness, and in rare cases it's been known to kill. So yeah, be on the lookout for this one should you be within its range. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The St. Lucia Racer From a very deadly rare snake to one that's honestly to be pitied for its rarity, I'll talk about the St. Lucia Racer. It sadly has the distinction of being the rarest snake in the world today. Based on the best estimates around, there are only about 20 or so of these creatures that are left on the entire planet. Now, for the record, that's real bad. That would be critically endangered to the point where you could argue it's basically extinct. Described as being gentle and easy to handle, the remaining snakes live on a half-mile square island just offshore of St. Lucia, one of the Lesser Antilles, a chain of small volcanic islands that stretches from Puerto Rico to South America, dividing the Caribbean from the Atlantic. So how is it possible that this snake on a small island was decimated so badly? Well, not unlike many other creatures out there in the world, a new predator was introduced into its ecosystem, and the result was was plain to see. In this case, the mongoose. It would be brought in from India in order to try to rid the island of the more venomous snakes that were out there. But the problem was, mongooses don't really care what kind of snakes they kill as long as they've killed them. And the St. Lucia racer was a heavy casualty of that period. It was only in recent years that true efforts would go into trying to save this species of snake, and there are some who believe the population numbers are higher than what's being given credit credit for. But until they're in the hundreds and thousands, the species just simply won't be safe. Number 18. Blind Blind Snake Try saying that five times fast. I dare you. I bet you won't even make it far before you bite your tongue. As you heal your pride, allow me to show you another rare serpent via the lined blind snake. It's also known as the striped blind snake, and it's rarely seen inhabiting lowland and lower montane forests up to elevations of about 1,400 meters in Singapore. Its body is relatively slender and is rounded in cross sections. Its head is 
is distinct from the neck and has a blunt snout. This allows for easier burrowing into the firm soil. And as the name would suggest, yes, it is really blind, even to the extent that it's rarely seen on the surface of the world because it prefers to be underground in its habitat. In 2019, the species was rediscovered along with a forested biking trail in Singapore after having not been found for over 170 years. That's a long time to be away from the world, but it once again reinforces a simple fact that if animals want to stay hidden from the eyes of the people, there are various ways that they can do that. Another element that's important here is that while it can be big enough for its needs, it's not the most imposing thing within its ecosystem, to the extent that many would agree that it would be consumed by other snakes should it be on the surface for too long. Add to that, it only eats certain kinds of insects, so it doesn't have as much going for it as other snakes do, and thus needs to stay rare in order to stay alive. Number 17. Albany Adder South Africa is home to critically endangered Albany adders, a species of dwarf adder. With only 17 known records, this is one of the world's most rare of snakes. Added to which, their only known location is under threat from open cast mining, wind turbines, and road developments. But while they are indeed in danger, it almost must be pointed out that up until 2017, they were actually believed to be extinct. It wouldn't be until a small sect of them would be rediscovered that the species was officially placed back on the map. After a week of scouring bushes, lifting up rocks, and cautiously peeking into holes, many of the herpetologists that were searching for them spotted a six inch long female slithering across the road. It said that when the research team found the snake, they were jumping up and down for joy because the species was indeed alive and not extinct as previously thought. Of course, of course, the work isn't actually done now, is it? There are certain animal groups that are working with South African officials in order to try and get things done in order to save the snake species. But whether they'll be successful is up for debate, because the destruction of habitat is sadly one of the things that's decimating all sorts of animal life and not just the Albany adder. Let's all hope that things turn around for it so that it's not extinct for another decade. Number 16. Cichlids Blunt-Nosed Viper The Cichlids Blunt-Nosed Viper is a species of snake in the family of vipers, which automatically makes them a species that you'd want to be careful around. They're listed as endangered by IUCN, but we'll dive into that a little more in a bit. They're typically found on the Greek islands of the Cichlids Archipelagio, which for you non-professional geographers sits in a bunch of little islands in the Aegean Sea. This species is classified as endangered according to the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species, and that indicates that the extent of its occurrence within its geographic range is estimated to be less than 5,000 kilometers square. That's its population severely fragmented or known to exist at no more than five locations. Furthermore, a continuing decline is observed, inferred, or projected in the area, extent and or quality of habitat, as well as the number of mature individuals. So listed because its extent of occurrence is, in fact, not much greater than 100 kilometers squared, it's known from only four small islands. There's a continuing decline in the extent and quality of its habitat, and it's experiencing a decline in the number of mature individuals due to persecution and overcollection. All in all, a very familiar tale in regards to what's happening to various other snakes that we've listed and will list later on, as well as other animals out in the world that need a certain habitat that's being taken away by man. Number 15. The Short-Nosed Sea Snake Sadly, we have to continue our look at snakes that are very much endangered in our world, and that also includes the short-nosed sea snake, which at one point wouldn't even be seen up until the year 2000, though this has changed and their numbers are still critically low. The short-nosed sea snake is estimated to occupy a combined area of about 10 square kilometers and is restricted to the Ashmore Reef and Hibernia Reefs off the coast of northern western Australia. The species is mostly 
found in water more than 10 meters deep and can be found both on the flat and around the edge of coral reefs. The snake will often rest during the day under coral overhangs in water that features depths of 1 to 2 meters. This makes it incredibly hard to truly verify its numbers within the species itself because if you can't see the snake, then you can't count it as being part of the population, hence why it was missing for years on end. Just as important in terms of its ability to stay hidden is that while this snake can come to the surface in order to get air, which it most definitely needs, it has the ability to stay under the water for over two hours. As if all that wouldn't be enough, there's not just one thing that's threatening the short-nosed sea snake, it's a bunch of things. That includes hunting, habitat destruction, global warming, and more. If things don't improve, then we may end up losing this species forever. Number 14. Antiguan Racer Now how about a little more uplifting of a story to help balance everything out? Meet the Antiguan Racer, a grey-brown snake that was, until recently, found only on Great Bird Island off the coast of Antigua in the Eastern Caribbean. Due to this recent finding, it was very rare and very endangered. However, once it was discovered and researched, it was able to be expanded so that there were much more of them around. How much more, you might ask? Well, it was estimated that when we discovered them, there were only about 50 of them around, but as it stands today, there are approximately 1,100. That may not seem like much compared to the populations of other species, but trust me, for this one, it's a lot. This was done by being able to rid its island of the non-native predators, meaning the invasive species that were brought in by others that threatened it, as well as reintroducing it to other islands that it would likely once have inhabited but were killed off on. In addition to Great Bird Island, the Antiguan racer was successfully recolonized in the nearby Rabbit Island, Green Island, and York Island. The Antiguan racer is harmless to humans and has a gentle temperament. It is diurnal, being active from dawn to dusk, and at night it rests in a hidden shelter, mainly due to concern of threats that could harm it if it's not careful. Let's all hope that we're able to save another snake species like this one here. Number 13. Horned Desert Viper just off the name alone, that sounds like a very menacing snake now, doesn't it? Just think about it. It's already a viper, which is usually an aggressive snake, and it lives in the desert, which often breeds very powerful and deadly snakes. And finally, it has horns. That in and of itself is a trifecta of evil. Sahara horned vipers are amongst the most abundant and easily distinguishable of the venomous snakes in the North African and Middle Eastern deserts. Serratus serratus, as they are known scientifically, is generally distributed all across North Africa, and that includes southwestern Arabia and southwestern Israel. A reason to be wary of these vipers is that they can be long enough to get your attention. They vary anywhere between two and three feet, depending on the gender. Of course, the females are bigger in the species. And aside from that, due to them living in the desert, they're also one of the snakes that perform sidewinding. This allows them to move efficiently enough across the sand without worrying about burning their skin. Snake skin, that is obviously. Oh, and yes, like many other desert snakes, the horned desert viper is said to have venom, and a bite usually causes swelling, hemorrhages, necrosis, nausea, vomiting, and something else which I can't even pronounce. It's really bad if you're in the desert, especially deep in the desert, because that might mean that you're too far away from help. So while this snake might be rare, it rarely needs help. Number 12. Aruba Island Rattlesnake Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh, I want to take you to Bermuda, Bahama. Come on, pretty mama. Oh, I hate the Beach Boys so much. Why was that stuck in my head? 
But then again, my pet guinea pig Twinkle loves the Beach Boys, so I guess I'll put up with it. Anyways, the Aruba Island rattlesnake is indeed a snake that's only found on the island of Aruba. Obviously, that's why it's called the Aruba Island rattlesnake, right? But there's a problem with that, as just 25 square kilometers of habitat remains undisturbed. And by undisturbed, I mean not touched by humans who want to keep turning their island into a tropical paradise loved by humans, and not anything else. What price is paradise after all? Oh, but it does get worse and weirder because they also face dangers from two other species on the island. One is non-native boa constrictors, which you can also blame on humans, that are fighting over the same food sources as the rattlesnake, and the other, feral goats. That's right, goats can be feral, and apparently they seriously harm the vegetation that these snakes like to live in, thus creating an even bigger problem. So how can we go and save these snakes? Well, part of the solution is getting rid of those boas and taking care of the goats. But there's also some people in places like zoos that are trying to take these snakes in in order to breed them in conservation. A few zoos seem to be having luck with that, and so if they keep it up, you never know what might happen. Number 11. Tonkatar and Dusty Rattlesnake now I'll keep with the rattlesnake party and we'll rage all night with the Tonkatar and Dusty Rattlesnake. This one is a very rare and moderately venomous snake that ranges in size from a little over a foot to nearly two and a half feet in length. It's found in a few discontiguous parts of west central Mexico, and furthermore, this small sized reptile is found in habitats that include volcanic mountainsides, being rocky outcrops, dry subtropical forests, and pine oak forests at elevations that reach between five and eight thousand feet. And this is definitely the most venomous snake in the United States. So that right there may explain why you'll likely never have heard of this particular snake, because if you're not in the right spot in Mexico, you're not going to get a glimpse of one. However, given that it's venomous, that might be for the best now, isn't it? The good news is that, like many snakes out there in the world today, they're active during the day. Apparently, that's because the temperatures of the region that they're in get so cold at night at times that it can actually restrict their movements, and that can be a death sentence for a snake. The other reason that they're rare is that while they do have a variety of environments they can exist in, they don't live outside of them in good numbers, and as a result of that, the other fact Factors like human interference and battles with other creatures, their numbers are now dwindling. They aren't at the level of other species on this list, however they get closer every day. Number 10. Santa Catalina Rattlesnake the Santa Catalina rattlesnake is a species of venomous pit viper endemic to Isla Santa Catalina in the Gulf of California, just off the east coast of the state of Baja California, Sur, Mexico. Wow, what a load of words. That might surprise you though about this snake outside of its rarity is that it's a rattlesnake. It does not have a rattle though. Yeah, it kind of seems like an oxymoron now, doesn't it? But that's just how it rolls or, in this case, how it rattles. The base of the tail, known as the button, has degenerated to such an extent that the rattle immediately falls off with each shed instead of forming a new segment. There are other species of rattlesnake that have this issue, ironically enough, so at the very least it's not alone in having this performance problem. A cool thing about this snake's body though is that because of its small size, it's able to be a rather swift climber, which led to many rumors and reports that it may have lost its rattle so that it could sneak up on birds that were roosting in the trees. Even with that cool feature, these are critically endangered species and as a result need to be helped out in order for them to survive. Number 9. Alcatraz Lancehead now, no, this is not a snake that's found exclusively on the island of Alcatraz, but could you just imagine if it was? That would have made the film The Rock even more awesome and terrifying to those who were stationed in its prison. Also, that would have been an awesome line for Sean Connery to say in the movie. Gentlemen, welcome to The Rock. Beware of snakes. 
Yeah, I know, Hollywood should really hire me, shouldn't they? Bothrops alcatraz, as it's also called, is a venomous pit viper species found only on the Alcatraz Island off the coast of southeastern Brazil. See, I told you it wasn't found on the rock. Now, after hearing this fact, what do you think it is that this snake's biggest problem is? Invasive species? No. Building on the islands? No. How about naval bombardment? Yes, it's true, Brazil has its navy testing out live rounds on certain islands that have no human population, and as a result, that means that the snakes are casualties of their weapons of war. Oh well, at least they're going out with a bang. Number 8. Round Island Boa the Round Island Boa is known to survive on Round Island, obviously, but it's also been recorded on the islands of Gunners Kwan, Flat Island, and on the mainland of Mauritius. I probably mangled up a bunch of those. It's endangered species, obviously, and has been that way for sadly quite a few decades. In 1996, the population was estimated at only about 250 mature individuals. That's better than some of the others I've shown you today, but not as many many as they could be. Recent conservation efforts have seen an increase in the number of adult boas to around 1,000, and this has been achieved by eradicating goats and rabbits from the island and restoring natural habitats, which have led to an increase in the boa's natural prey, and it specializes in lizard hunting. Now, let this be another happy story for you that proves that conservation efforts really do indeed work if the work is actually put into it. Number 7. Long-Nosed Whip Snake the long-nosed whip snake has another name in the Sri Lankan green vine snake, and it's apparently one that you're going to be glad is rare because it's not just menacing looking, it's also very venomous. Common vine snakes are diurnal, arboreal, and mildly venomous, and they normally feed on frogs and lizards using their binocular vision to hunt. They're slow moving, relying on camouflaging themselves as vines and foliage, and they expand their bodies when disturbed to show a black and white scale marking. Their camouflage is something that many have to be careful of because that means that they can really blend into the environment and you could be near one and not even know it. Which is bad because as noted, they have venom. The ingredients of the venom that this snake has is actually unknown and if you think about it, that's really terrible because if you don't know what's in the venom, how are you supposed to treat it immediately? The venom is moderately potent and can cause swelling, pain, bruising, numbness, and other local symptoms, which will subside within three days. Bites close to the head, though, with the eyes and other vital areas, could be severe, so if you're going to be bitten by this thing, just make sure it's not near a critical area. Or you could just avoid Sri Lanka altogether and not have to deal with any of it at all. Number 6. Rhinoceros Viper now that is a name for a snake, because most snake names just describe what they do. But when you're named after one of the most imposing animals in the entire world, that's pretty cool. This large viper is known for its striking coloration and prominent nasal horns, thus giving it the look of a rhino and giving it its cool ass name in the process. It's found from Guinea to Ghana in West Africa and in Central Africa in the Central African Republic, Southern Sudan, Cameroon, Gabon, Congo, DR Congo, Angola, Rwanda, Uganda, and Western Kenya. This snake occurs in forested areas, rarely venturing into the woodlands. And its range, therefore, is more restricted than other certain snakes in its family, which also adds to its rarity. They're stalkers of the night, and while they're slow on the ground, they can strike quickly, tending not to warn their prey before biting them. Oh, and that venom? Well, it can be deadly, so just know that you've been warned. Number 5. Blunt Head Tree Snake the blunt head tree snake is a species of rare fanged, mildly venomous snakes that reside in Mexico, Central America, and South America. So right off the bat, that's not really a snake that you want to mess with. 
No, not at all. It's most often found in low vegetation like coffee trees or bromelades and prefers cooler and moist areas such as wet forests and rainforests. So if you're willing to stay away from those, you should be fine. As the name would suggest, it is a snake that loves to be up in the trees, and because it's a nocturnal creature, it will rest in shaded areas like trees and then go through the vegetation at night to try and find a meal. The males will prey mostly on small lizards, frogs, and reptile eggs, but females, well, they have bigger heads, and thus they end up going after bigger game. Perhaps even you. Number 4. Dragon Snake The dragon snake is not one that's like a dragon in many cases. It doesn't fly, it doesn't breathe fire, it doesn't sit on top of a castle, and it doesn't have a connection with a certain family that sought the Iron Throne and was totally screwed out of it by the bullcrap story reasons of showrunners who should be ashamed of what they did in the final season. Just to name a few differences. These species are best known for their characteristic dorsal scales and interesting defense mechanism in which they stiffen their entire bodies when threatened. <laughs> So basically, they have dragon scales, hence the name. Another rather curious element to these snakes is the fact that they're a species that doesn't do well in captivity, also like dragons from a certain show, and they tend to die once they're put into chains. So do I have any volunteers to be their chain breaker? All right, fine, I'll stop it with the Game of Thrones references now. After all, Twinkle is still pretty upset about that last season. Moving on, Number 3. Madagascar Leaf-Nosed Snake The island of Madagascar is both a place of beauty and tragedy. The former is because it's an island that has all sorts of creatures that live there and nowhere else in the world, but the tragic part of that is due to human expansion, the natural habitats of many of these creatures are slowly being diminished. And one of the biggest ones taking the hit is the Madagascar leaf nose snake. As the name would suggest, it's a serpent that has a nose shaped like a leaf, but if you really want to know why it does that, you'd honestly have to ask the snake. Oh, and uh, one more thing, these are also one of the most venomous snakes around, to the extent that they're able to kill people with just one bite if they wanted to. Number 2. Garevsky's Viper it's always interesting when a snake is named after a person, not the least of which is that the person must have really wanted the credit for finding the snake. Not the worst way to get famous, but I can actually think of better. This viper is one that can only be found in northwestern Armenia and northeastern Turkey, and it's named after Ilya Derevsky, who was one of the first to find and identify the species, as you might have guessed. Also, as you might have guessed, the reason for the snake's slow demise is, like many others, the destruction of its habitat. To the extent that there are apparently only about 500 of these snakes left in the world, and they're scattered across a few areas, which makes it hard for them to consolidate and regrow their ranks. Number 1. Hairy Bush Viper The hairy bush viper is a venomous viper species endemic to Central Africa. It's known for its extremely keeled dorsal scales that give it its bristly appearance. In other words, it's very intimidating. And just as bad as its exterior is the interior, which is full of venom. Not much is actually known about the venom, except that it's mainly neurotoxic. Besides the neurotoxins, they also carry cytotoxins and something else that I can't pronounce. Again, if I can't pronounce it, it must be bad, and it's even more bad when you don't know what it's about to do when it goes into your body. Plus, while recorded attacks are few, the ones that have been on record have been noted to be so terrible that it actually destroys your internal organs. Oh, how fun. Granted, humans are not usually on their menu, but as most snakes would tell you, they don't really care what they bite as long as it leaves them alone. And that's all from the realm of rare snakes of the world. 
Do you think that some of these are honestly in the areas where you live? Which ones are the ones that you're most glad are not where you reside? Do you know another snake that should be on this list due to being so rare? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Also be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.